Hey YouTube, Jason here of Jason's 310. Quick video this week on why I insist on flying above 10,000 feet. And you might be thinking, strange topic for a video, but this was inspired by a question that somebody recently asked me if I fly rich of peak or if I fly lean of peak. And the answer is neither, and that's the point of this video. I'll explain. So why do I like to fly above 10,000 feet? There's less traffic. In theory, there's only aircraft equipped with ADSB unless you're in the mountains and close to the ground there in the mountains. You're above most of the low level convection and that's much cooler, less bumpy at that altitude. In the US, you can fly right over the top of most class Bravos. Um, so you're not gonna get vectored around in theory. But most importantly, there's no red box. My engines are just kind of loafing along above 10,000 feet. What do I mean by red box? I'm not talking about a British phone box or a DVD rental. So what is the red box? I'm not going to launch into a long-winded explanation. Instead, I'm going to simplify it using a derivation by Mike Bush called the red fin. As you can see from the diagram, it appears like a shark's fin. The diagram plots percent power versus EGT. The red area is an area of EGTs to avoid as they would cause excessive cylinder head temperatures in this zone. So note that you either need to run way rich a peak or lean a peak above approximately 65% power. Below 65% power though, the red fin goes away. And what that means is you, it doesn't matter. You can run your mixture anywhere you want to in that zone. Why might it be a bad idea to fly above 10,000 feet? I struggled to come up with some bullet points on this. Low blood oxygen saturation due to your age and or health. That might be a reason why you don't want to do this. Icing, possibly. Fear of heights. I don't know. I'm kind of running out of stuff on that. Comment below if you can think of some reasons other than your blood oxygen level why you wouldn't want to fly above 10,000 feet. So let's look for my airplane, Cessna 310Q. Let's look at what percent power you're making at 2300 RPM and wide open throttle for various altitudes. So at 7,500 feet, at a manifold pressure of 22 inches, you're making about 64% power. At 10,000, it's about 20 inches and 59%. And at 12.5, it's about 18 inches and 54%. Here's the red box or red fin. Again, the red area being the naughty zone. I have added altitude lines at 7,500, 10,000 feet, and 12,500 feet that correspond to altitudes in my 310 at 2,300 RPM and wide open throttle. So those are the percent horsepowers at those altitudes and settings. As you can see, above 10,000 feet, there is no red fin or red area. I can lean my mixtures to any setting I like because the engines aren't producing enough horsepower to generate excessively hot cylinder head temperatures. So let's look at how the numbers would pan out for flying a long cross country of around 800 nautical miles at either 7,500, 10,000, or 12,500 feet. So here's a trip from Houston, Texas to Walterboro, South Carolina. I just chose Walterboro because it was close to 800, 793, but we'll just call it 800, and it's close to sea level as well to keep uh, everything simple. So the climb out would be at 120 knots true airspeed. And again, this would vary um, with altitude a bit because I do a constant indicated airspeed climb, but it doesn't really, I've ran some sensitivities. It doesn't really affect it too much. These are the times to climb in decimal minutes. So like the Hobbs meter would read. The climb fuel in gallons so from this includes taxi takeoff and uh, all the way up to top of climb 
and then the climb distance. So that's calculated, that's just taking 120 knots times the time to climb and uh, working that out. So here are the aforementioned cruise settings. So uh, 22 inches at 7,500, 20 inches at 10,000, 18 inches at 12.5. And these are the true air speeds in knots. So 177, 174, and 168 knots at the respective altitudes. The fuel flow in gallons per hour. Then the cruise distance. So the trip total distance is 800 nautical miles. And from that, I subtract the climb distance from the climb section above, and that leaves the distance for cruise. And that includes descent. So in my airplane, I typically back off an inch or two lower the nose. The fuel flow stays the same. You might pick up five knots in the descent, but uh, again, it doesn't really affect the overall answer. The cruise time in decimal hours and then the fuel burn during the cruise portion of the trip. So the total estimated time and route for the various scenarios are 4.56 hours, 4.66, and 4.82 hours. So obviously going higher takes a bit longer to get to your destination. And then these are the total fuel burns. So I use less fuel up high relative to cruising at say 7,500 feet. So if you look at the difference between cruising this trip at 7,500 feet versus 12,500, and yes, I know 12,500 is not an eastbound VFR altitude. I'm just, ignore that for a minute. I'm just trying to show the relative um, differences between uh, these different cruise altitudes. The total savings at four ninety a gallon, which is the average fuel price that I paid this year, to go up high adds, or sorry, saves thirty six dollars in fuel, and it increases my trip time by sixteen minutes. So all the benefits that I tout for flying high save me a bit of cash, and only add fifteen minutes and let's say or sixteen minutes. And remember, this is for a long trip. This total trip is just shy of five hours. So. Now let's look at a shorter trip now. This is a trip I take quite often. It's a bit more interesting from Houston to Dallas. I fly to McKinney National. It's roughly 210 nautical miles total distance. And I'm not going to step through um, all the calculations. It's just all I've done here is change the, the distance for the trip to 210 nautical miles. And here's the answer. If you look at 7,500 versus 12,500, it actually cost me about $3 extra and adds five minutes to go up to 12,500 feet. And yes, I do actually cruise a short trip like this up at 12,500 going up and 11,500 feet coming back. And the other interesting thing, if you look uh, for 10,000 feet, the estimated time and route and the trip fuel, the um, again, the, the times aren't are kind of the differences in time are pretty negligible, but from a fuel burn standpoint, the most efficient altitude for a short trip like this would be 10,000 feet because it burns just a little less fuel at that altitude. But again, it's you know, it's peanuts really. So, back to the original question that I get asked do I fly Richa Peak or Lena Peak? Neither, that's the point. Above 10,000 feet, there's no need to choose. I simply lean my mixture to provide a smooth running engine and to obtain the desired true airspeed that I want. So what do I do if I'm just tooling around the countryside on my way to a fly-in or $100 hamburger? I still choose a power setting below 60% power and lean for smooth operation. The reason is I'm not in a hurry and it saves fuel. So that's how I choose to operate my airplane. I'm either up high, not in a hurry, or down low, not in a hurry. That's simple as that. So anyway, please comment below if you have any uh, comments on how you like to operate your engine. More videos soon.